Canada, Switzerland, and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are, from Kartong to Koina, with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland, and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast, and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer. We are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Thanks, Madhu Jai, Honorable Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Yakub Adrame, Honorable Deputy Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Mamat Ocham, esteemed Military Advisor, Güven Demir, distinguished members of the Gambian Armed Forces, and uh, dear brothers and sisters, and of course, esteemed members of the uh, Gambian uh, press organs. Uh, at the outset, I would like to express my uh, happiness that uh, bilateral relations between Turkey and the Gambia have been developing rapidly at every level. We enjoy strong ties in many fields, including education, internal security, capacity building, healthcare and infrastructural development. But our military cooperation has a special characteristic which dates back to early 1990s. During the past 30 years, we have had very fruitful cooperation with the Gambian Armed Forces and the Gambian government, which is characterized by mutual trust, solidarity, and a deep sense of cooperation. Turkey has always been committed to intensifying its support to the Gambia Armed Forces in the areas of training and logistic support. Today, I am very pleased to be here on the occasion of the handover ceremony of two APCs from the Turkish Ministry of Defense to the Gambian Armed Forces, and this is in line with Turkish efforts to complement and support the Gambian Armed Forces' willingness to deploy peacekeeping troops in a UN mission with their country-owned equipment. These two APCs are purchased with funds from the Military Financial Cooperation Protocol between the Republic of the Gambia and Turkey. Esteemed participants, we know it's an established fact that the Gambian Armed Forces have an excellent track record in peacekeeping missions in different parts of the world. And we commend the readiness and competence of the Gambian Armed Forces to take part in other missions with the same dedication and enthusiasm. And it's my fervent hope that these two APCs by, acquired by the Gambian Armed Forces will go a long way in complementing your efforts and peacekeeping endeavors. Uh, before concluding my re remarks, please allow me to say that uh, I was very much privileged uh, to attend the passing out ceremony of intake 37 yesterday at the Gambian Armed Forces Training School in Fajara. Having, having seen the skills and drills displayed, I can easily conclude that the Gambian Armed Forces have uh, requisite knowledge, skills, and abilities to conduct all kinds of conventional and non-conventional military operations in any environment. Once again, I, ex I express my heartful thanks for, for partnering with Turkey in your peacekeeping endeavors. And by keeping in mind the motto of peace at home, peace in the world by Great Atatürk, I wish every success to all members of the Gambian Armed Forces for their current and future assignments uh, for the protection of peace at home and peace in the world. Thank you very much. At this juncture, I would like to respectfully invite the respected Chief of Defense Staff, Gambian Forces, Lieutenant General Jacob Aitrami, to make his remarks. Sir. Thank you. His Excellency, the Turkish Ambassador to the Republic of the Gambia, 
His Excellency Tolga Bermek, the Honorable Minister of Defense of the Republic of the Gambia, Ambassador Seru Modunjai, the Deputy Chief of Defense to Gambia Armed Forces, Service Commanders here present, Staff of the Turkish Embassy in the Gambia, Principal Staff Officers of the Joint Defense Headquarters and the Joint Services Headquarters here present, gallant men and women, I marked to serve as crews and technicians vis-a-vis -vis the operations of the APC vehicles. Senior officers here present, soldiers, ratings of the Gambia Armed Forces, representative of Katma Chile here present, distinguished members of the press, and of course, all of the protocols duly and respectfully observed. I want to begin by giving exceptional thanks and praises to God for making this day possible. Before I dwell on my statement, allow me to give you to take it through memory lens, basically to take you back how this process all started. Precisely four years ago, the armed forces of the Gambia had a very constructive and frank discussions with the United Nations. The discussion was centered on very important subjects. How do we, as an institution and as a country, advance our desire to partake in a more meaningful development and deployment across the world under the auspices of the United Nations. During those discussions with the top brothers of the United Nations, without hesitations, they were able to say to the Gambia, we would allow you to deploy in any of our given missions. In my view, that's an exceptional privilege accorded the Gambia. My understanding of peace support operations usually always, when a mission is already established, to have a foothold in that mission is usually always very difficult. Because when an idea is conceived, to establish a UN-sponsored peacekeeping mission. Usually, always, the procedure entails there's going to be what we call a concept of operation is drawn or is written. The concept of operation would perhaps describe who and who is required to partake in those missions. In other words, they try to determine the force generation. What are the forces to be generated for that specific mission? In other words, they give you a breakdown to say, we have need an armored vehicle, we have need an armored contingent, we need this number of infantry contingent, we need this specialized contingent, etc., etc. Usually, that's the process at the United Nations. First, you conceive an idea to deploy, followed by complement of what we call a concept of operations. Concept of operation basically tells you in vivid terms what is required for that mission. Then, we have what we call force generation. After the first generation, we have what we call the pledging conference. Already, you, already all member states that constitute the United Nations, they already have an idea what the size and composition of the military is going to look like, or the mission is going to look like. Then, 
Member State are asked to do what we call pledged against the backdrop of the size and composition of that mission. Imagine if already there's an established mission, meaning Member State have done their pledges already. Usually, always, latecomers would find it difficult to have a foothold in that mission. Currently, there are existing missions across the world. However, when we approach the United Nations to express our desire as an institution and as a nation, the United Nations did not hesitate to say, Gambia will give you a spot. What does that denote? Over the years, gallant men and women in the Gambia Armed Forces, we've had our participation in peacekeeping missions. And during the period under review, you've exemplified your performance. We have an impeccable performance track record in these missions. It could be the size small, but at the United Nations, no country is small. No matter how big you may be, the principle is one country, one vote. Even rich countries have no predominance over small countries. Every country, their voices are respected and heard. So Gambia, despite the size in those peace missions, They've always recognized the exemplary performance of you, the fine men and women in uniform. That's the Gambia Armed Forces. On the basis of that, when we requested to make a pledge, instantly they said to Gambia, we'll give you a slot. And they did not stop there. They say we would allow you to deploy in the context of a quick reaction force. That, again, is an exceptional privilege accorded to the Gambia Armed Forces. To go in that context as quick reaction force will require a lot on the side of the country. It's not a traditional peacekeeping like protection force. It means it's the next level. In other words, you would be operational command and controlled of the first commander. In other words, you'll be the direct link of the first commander. As and when the situation presents itself, you could be the first port of call to give the necessary response to quell whatever the circumstance is. In my view, that's an exceptional privilege we should all be proud of. They did not give it to bigger countries. They did not give it to well-advanced militaries, but they will give it to Gambia. Why? They've attested that we can do it, given our impeccable track performance record in other missions. I think we should be proud of this achievement. Having acquired that portion of it, now we have to actualize it. I remember this was shared at the level of the executive. Then we were asked to prepare what they call cabinet people. Cabinet people was approved, was prepared, and then taken to cabinet. Unanimously, at the, cabinet, at the level of the cabinet, it was approved. Once again, it did not confidence and trust they have in the armed forces. The next issue was to do, how do we now get the way with us to partake in such a credible mission? In partaking as a quick reaction force, you have two components of logistics. One is what we call the soft skin vehicles, i.e. the buffaloes we have, command vehicles, ambulances, water purification plant, and water tanker, fuel tankers, water bowsers, etc. These constitute what we call the first stage of the requirement. The second stage of the requirement is what we call the critical enablers. If you want to go as a quick reaction force, there's an absolute need to have what we call armored personnel carriers, in short, APCs. APCs to acquire them is capital intensive. 
is very expensive. Because the average individual, if you tell them one piece of an APC is more than half a million of dollars, people may want to ask where to get that money from. Notwithstanding, we made frantic efforts as an institution and by extension as a government. We decided to contract Kat Mashela. What we've seen today, basically, this was a direct consultation between the Turkish Armed Forces and the Gambia Armed Forces. They are very conscious of the need to enhance the professional competence and equally allow the Gambia Armed Forces to partake in mission. Without hesitations, after consulting with my counterpart, they did not hesitate. Of course, the government and people of Turkey, they did not hesitate to say as a starting point, we would procure two APCs for you, the chain of which is more than $1 million. And they decided to buy a for the Gambia Armed Forces and the Gambia as a country, two armored personnel carriers, which is present with us this morning. What is the deduction here? The Turkish Armed Forces and the Turkish Republic, they are indeed a genuine, genuine and reliable partners. A partner that would go that extra line to commit from the national resources over one million US dollars to buy the two first two sets of armored personnel carrier for the Gambia Armed Forces and the Gambia as a country. That's quite commendable. <clears throat> Under such economic uncertainties, when today the whole world is gripped with concerns over the issue of possible economic recession. Notwithstanding, the Turkish government, through the Turkish military of defense and the armed forces, decided to buy the, for us two armored personnel carriers that is present with us today. On the basis of that, in my assessment, and which is a view shared by all members of the armed forces, Turkey is indeed a strategic partner. <clears throat> Turkey is indeed a genuine partner. Turkey, by implications, or by, 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 by implications, they are predictable. They are reliable and they sustain the relationship. Only a true friend can go that extra length to enhance the relationship that already exists between two institutions and two countries. We want to say we very much appreciate the intervention of the Turkish government in providing such a much needed critical enigma to enhance our participation in peace support operation. Your Excellency, we want to thank the government of Turkey. We want to thank the Turkish Armed Forces to you for such an exemplary intervention. Only a true and genuine friend can go that extra length. I recall vividly last day in August, because when you talk of a quick reaction force, it requires specially trained individuals to perform those functions. In August of last year, on the sideline of the Defense Expo, I had a very constructive discussion with my counterpart, that is the Turkey's Chief of General Staff, General Yasser. My discussion was sent it on how do we take the relationship to the next level. And equally to acknowledge and thank him for all the support they continue to render to the Gambia Armed Forces. And one of my main critical concerns 
was how do we adequately prepare the troops for future missions, i.e. the quick reaction, mission, quick reaction force mission. And my request was centered on the possibility of training two sets of 250 each within a very short time frame. Remember this engagement was done on the 18th of August. Whilst we sat together to discuss this, he has his principal staff officers sitting with him at the back. He quickly turned around and confided in his principal staff officers. On this spot, he told me, General, my dear brother, consider it done. What does that denote? Only a true friend can take what I call spontaneous decision just like that, without hesitation. He said to me, consider it done. And he was quick to tell me, give me two weeks, I'll come back to you. I returned back home. Barely five days, I received a very encouraging and positive response from him. In which case, he was able to outline how he intend to conduct the training. He said the first batch, imagine this was on the 27th. He said on the 3rd of October last year, the Turkish Armed Forces would airlift 250, that's 250 of your personnel to Turkey. They would airlift them. And he did not stop there. He said, we would provide them with clothing. We would provide them with accommodation. We would feed them. And we would give them stipend. Trust me, that's only a genuine friend can do that. We want to say thank you, Ambassador. On the culmination point, we saw two batches of 250 each airlifted from the shores of this country to the shores of Turkey for what we call intensive training. And they did not stop there. They provided them with the logistics to support the training. To the point, I almost lost 200, 500 percent of my people. They always, always wanted to be Turkish already. I said to my counterpart, you can train my soldier, but don't take them and make them Turkish individuals. <laughs> but again, they've learned a lot from Turkey. They were able to integrate very well. They aligned themselves with the cultures and tradition of Turkey. And they won the admirations of the Turkish staff out there, and even the locals. That's quite commendable. We want to thank you most profoundly. Today is not a price and speak given day, but it's good also. When situations of this nature present themselves, let the audience understand how it all started and where we are. If there was no beginning, there could never be any end. The beginning is very important so that we all have an idea of where it all started. Today is the culmination point. We have realized the promise he made by giving us two armored personnel carrier. That includes the shipment of this armored personnel carrier. That includes sending technicians to come and take us through the process to have a feel or hand on deck assessment of these APCs, to know the characteristics, to know the operations of this APC. Only a true friend can do that. We are blessed to have a genuine partner like the Turkish Armed Forces and the Turkish government. Allow me, Your Excellency, to thank you most profoundly for having found time for your very busy schedule to come and present or to grace this occasion with your physical presence through the context of making this presentation of these invaluable military assets. As an institution, as a government, we very much appreciate that exceptional effort on the side of the government and people and the extension the Turkish Armed Forces by coming with this laudable and a worthwhile gift. 
we cherish the relationship, and we want to say thank you. Always thank you. Always thank you. And God bless you all. Your Excellency, the Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey to the Gambia, His Excellency Ambassador Tolga Bermek, Excellency, the Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Yankuba Drami, the Deputy Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces, members of staff of the Turkish Embassy in Banjul, the Deputy Head of Mission here present, the Turkish military advisor in the country, service commanders, Army Republican National Guard, and the representative of the commander of the Navy, the principal staff officers, officers and men of the Gambia Armed Forces, our dear brothers and friends from Kajmadilerg the company, the crew for this two unit Hizir, members of the media fraternity, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Let me also seize this opportunity to join the Chief of Defense Staff in expressing our profound gratitude most sincere thanks and appreciation on behalf of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, His Excellency President Adam Abaro, his government and the people of the Republic of the Gambia, through His Excellency the Ambassador to the government and people of the Republic of Turkey, for this special occasion marking the delivery of two units of Hizir to the Gambia Armed Forces. Today is a very important ceremony. We feel the joy and happiness in building the special relationship with the Republic of Turkey. Turkey is a country that has a special relationship with the Republic of the Gambia. It is an excellent relationship. Of course, I must add that the Chief of Defense Staff and my humble self also had the opportunity to serve in that beautiful country, the Republic of Turkey, in our diplomatic functions. I took over from him. And when I came new, I had found that the ground was completely level for me to start my work as deputy head of mission. I want to thank him for that. Well, if we are to mark and highlight the relationship with Turkey, it could be recalled that in 2020, 2018, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, undertook a special visit to the Republic of Turkey, and during his engagement with his counterpart, His Excellency President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the two leaders took the opportunity to discuss very important areas. Among them was the defense cooperation agreement between our two countries. It is under this framework agreement that the Republic of Turkey decided to provide a military financial assistance program for the Gambia. And in this program, the Gambia will be able to use this program to procure military equipment and services under the aegis of the resource allocation program. It is out of that today we are witnessing the delivery of these two units. I must thank the Republic of Turkey through His Excellency the Ambassador here. Please convey our sincere appreciation and gratitude to the Republic of Turkey. The Republic of Turkey did not only stop at the defense cooperation level with the Gambia. Turkey has been supporting and continue to support our developmental agenda, our socio-economic development of this country. Let me also mention a few other sectors that the Republic of Turkey has immensely contributed 
One of them is on the health sector. We have also had a very important agreement, which is the Medical and Health Sciences Agreement with the Republic of Turkey. Under this framework agreement, the Republic of Turkey undertakes to treat almost about 25 Gambian patients each year for free of charge. No other country can do this. It is only Turkey who is doing this. We want to thank the Republic of Turkey. And these are on critical conditions where their conditions cannot be treated in the country. Take them to Turkey, treat them, and bring them back. Also, on the side of the education sector, we continue to receive also the support from the Republic of Turkey. Every year, Turkey will grant almost up to 30 Gambian students that will graduate from grade 12, go into the Turkish uh, universities, repeatable universities for that matter. And what do happen is that this is under the Yetebe Scholarship Program, the Turkish Government Scholarship Award. I cannot remember where a country can give such a number of scholarship slot to a country without having to ask for something. But Turkey decided to do all this based on our uh, respect, the bilateral relations we had, and also our shared views and concern. And as a brother, this is why all this thing is happening. The Turkish International Cooperation and Development Agency, TICA, which has already opened an office also in the Gambia here, has executed numerous projects in the Gambia, millions of, what, millions of dollars. They have done great work in helping the Republic of the Gambia. If we could stand here, start listing down all the support that is coming from Turkey, we would not exhaust the list. But let me, on behalf of my ministry, congratulate the Chief of Defense Staff for this very important ceremony today. This is all out of recognition of his great leadership as the Chief of Defense Staff of the Gambia Armed Forces. Signing a cooperation agreement with a country does not only mean that you can reap the benefit of the cooperation agreement. It has to go with a lot of push and engagement, and this is exactly what the Chief of Defense Staff has been doing. I want to thank you most uh, gratefully. I remember he has mentioned when he also undertook a visit to Turkey to engage his counterpart, General Yasa. Then I was also serving in the mission. This is the reality. It was part of his agenda to ask Turkey to help in the training of 500 troops. And then this was done as it was requested. No country can do that. 500 is not a small number. If they have to undertake that responsibility, which is coming also from their national budget and resources, million has been committed to support the training of those 500 personnel who have been airlifted from this source to Turkey, and they have been brought back. We want to thank Turkey as well. Today it's not meant for a long speech, but deep down in our hearts, we are grateful. We're feeling joy. We are happy. The armed forces is also very grateful and happy that today these two units will also enable the effective functioning operational efficiency of the Gambia Armed Forces. On this note, again, I want to thank uh, the Republic of Turkey uh, for all the support, invaluable support, that has been rendered to the government of the Republic of the Gambia. Long live the Republic of the Gambia and Turkey. Long live the relationship between the two countries. Long live the relationship between the two armed forces. I thank you. If you want to receive monies from UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! 
You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer we are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Supersonics.